Um, before we get on to the uh, the programming and setting up of the Arduino, I thought I'd just do a quick recap because maybe something I said earlier didn't make any sense. And that is that um, I mentioned about the need for our lighting in our signals to be protected with resistors. And the reason why we need to protect them is because the pins from the Arduino provide 5 volts, which is too much for our LEDs, which would normally expect to work on sort of 2 volts, 2.2 volts, that sort of thing. Um, but then I went on to say that we've got LED uh, detectors and emitters in our detector unit, which can be provided with 5 volts, which doesn't make any sense. And the reason why we can do that is because these units I mentioned earlier have a little circuit board and the resistors are already built into them. So 5 volts to these is, is absolutely no trouble at all. Um, while we're on the subject of these detectors, I thought I'd talk a bit about them in terms of what they do and also other options we've got. These ones here have an infrared LED, so that's giving out infrared light, which is obviously invisible to the naked eye, and a detector. And because they're side by side, any infrared light going out is not normally picked up by the detector coming back. Um, and if you remember earlier, I had um, a, a wagon which I rolled over the top of the detector. And it's quite simply what happens is the detector infrared light is bounced back by the object and it's detected. So in other words, it, it, we know that something was there. In fact, the, the, uh, the, the, the wagon that I did use had some silver paper on the bottom of it. Very much like that. Um, and that helps the detector detect any infrared light. Um, these ones here are really, really good. And the reason why they're so good is because they've even got an LED on board which tells you when something has been detected. So nothing's detected. I move my hand in front, detection. So they're really, really easy to use. Also, if you know, there's a little, um, a little screw hole in there which you can adjust the sensitivity of the detector. So if, you, if the detector is detecting things too far away or maybe de it's detecting the ambient light in the room, you don't want that and you can adjust its sensitivity with this. Whereas this here is about right, I would say. If you've got a wagon coming along here, goes in front of the detector and it detects it. Brilliant. Um, what you obviously need to do in terms of how this operates is get these LEDs in the right position. And as you saw earlier, mine are inside the, the track, inside the sleepers. So there's a bit of work needed to do in terms of, of, of sighting these. And as you can see these little legs on here, you can quite easily bend these up and then poke them through your, your baseboard through the track. Alternatively, you can just cut these off, extend them with wires and use that. Um, there are other options, of course. Um, what I might as well point out now I mentioned about earlier that I use the um, the Everard junction method of of approach, and I don't have I don't have these on my layout because these didn't really come in until probably a couple of years ago. I have actually got these, and what they are is is basically a much sort of simplified version of this, I guess, in that it's got the detector and the emitter side by side, and all I've got is four little legs coming out. So what I've got to figure out is how I can use my Arduino program to successfully employ these because I can't really now take these out of my layout because there are some areas that are quite inaccessible and all I've got coming out the bottom of my layout is four wires which would connect to these. So I've got to figure that out but we're not going to worry about that at the moment. We're going to use these for our example and they're perfect. What we could also use if we don't really want to use these is another option. Well, there are a lot of options, but one of the options are what are called read switches. And I don't have any of those available at the moment. I have got some, but I just can't find them. And a read switch is no more complicated than just a straightforward switch. So there's our switch. But these are in a tiny little glass tube. Like that. Uh, and it's sim as simple as a normal switch we use to turn the lights on and off. And what operates these switch is a magnet. Um, I haven't tried any yet, and uh, it could be could be a much more simpler way to do this, rather than relying on this complicated um, system of having infrared light emi emitting and detecting. We just still have, have a simple switch, and on the bottom of our locomotive or our train, we have a little magnet. And as long as this reed switch can detect that magnet, then it's a job done. It's 
So rather than having all this list, you just stick a magnet on the bottom of your uh, locomotives. You put the reed switch under the track or maybe between the track in the ballast because they are very small and that will solve a problem of having to drill holes through your baseboard to put in um, these emitters. But that's, that's just another option and I'm not going to go into that in this video because purely what I want to do is we want to be able to use these to activate our signalling. So uh, what else? Is there anything else I need to talk about? Um, okay, well, we talk about pins as well in a sec on the um, on the actual Arduino. Right, we need to uh, pre-plan the number of pins we need to use on the um, the Arduino because there aren't an unlimited number, obviously. Um, if you remember on this diagram, I had four pins that were supplying the voltage to the LED lamps. I had another pin for our override switch and I had another pin which was going to tell us if a train had been detected or not. So for each of the signals, that was one, two, three, four, five, six pins. Um, OK, so that was easy enough. So if we got three signals, then obviously we need 18 pins. So let's have a look at the Arduino again. Um, hopefully this is clear. Uh, you've got pin zero and pin one, and I don't think we can use those because they have a specific function on the Arduino uh, which which is, a, I think it's a serial bus, I think. So we can start from pin 2. We've got pin 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. And then they are all, uh, they are all called digital pins there. Um, and down the bottom we've got further analog pins, A0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. But we can use the analog pins as digital pins as well. So add that to that. I also mentioned about the need to have um, outputs for the ground and also a provision of a 5 volt supply as well. So if we look back on the Arduino, down the bottom here you can see it says 5 volts. There's a 5 volt supply pin there, another one there, a ground pin there, a ground pin there and a ground pin up there. And obviously there won't be enough ground and 5, um, yes that's right, there won't be enough ground and 5 volt pins for three signals so we but we can we can have those common together so we can just collect those together and use one pin for, for several several supplies or, or grounds as it were so that's no problem right so because we're sort of we've almost used every pin on here we obviously need to pre-plan what, what pin what each of the pins do so when we come to plug all this slot into this arduino which we'll do next we need to know which pin does what and, and which cable goes where so I've done that. So here's my little crib sheet, which may look a little bit frightening, but it's not really. Here's my little crib sheet to tell me what each of these pins do uh, and the corresponding piece of software, which tells each pin what to do, matches this, this diagram. So there's a potential for three signals, signal one, two and three. And also we're trying to build in a functionality so that we can tell whether each of these signals is a four or three aspect. So if we use an example of a four aspect signal and we want one signal, signal number one, the infrared det detector is connected to pin two, the green light on the signal is connected to pin three, the lower amber signal uh, lamp is connected to pin four, the upper amber is connected to, to pin five, the red is connected to pin six, and the override switch is connected to pin 7. If we want to use a three aspect signal instead, it's more or less the same for signal 1. We use the infrared detector to pin 2, green light to pin 3, the single amber light to pin 4. There is no upper amber light, so single, so pin 5 is not required. Uh, red to pin 6 and the override switch to pin 7. For So that, that's the whole of signal 1 for those, those pins. There's reserved for signal 1. If we want to use the signal 2, it's the same thing again. Infrared detector goes in pin 8. The green lamp goes to pin 9. Uh, an amber would go to 10. If we were going to use the upper amber, that would be pin 11. Red, pin 12. Override switch, pin 13. Again, those pins are reserved for signal 2. Now, if we only want one signal, those pins we just don't use. We, 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 well, I've still assigned them in the software, but they're just not used. So there we go. That's, that's relatively straightforward. So what we're going to do now, I'll, I'll leave this on the screen as a grab as well, so you can actually um, see it without me waving around a piece of paper. 
what we're going to do now is I'm going to use my little crib sheet which here to now plug in the bits and bolts we need into the Arduino. Once we've done that, we can then load the software up. OK, let's do that now. Actually, I think we'll we'll leave this this part there because it's over 10 minutes now, I think. So part three, we will um, set up the Arduino and get the software loaded on, hopefully. See you then.